Last summer, NASCAR partnered with ABB to unveil a radically new all-electric stock car to mixed reviews. Recently, Ford and Chevy got in on the action. Three prototype electric vehicles took to the streets of Chicago. And today, I have the opportunity to talk with an ABB vice president about their partnership with NASCAR, the future of these electric prototypes, and a lot more. It's now my great pleasure to be joined by ABB Vice President Chris Shigas. Chris, uh, it's great to see you. How are you doing today? Hey, thanks a lot. I'm living the dream. I'm, you know, I, I just came back from Sonoma. We were in Chicago and Atlanta, and I'm on my way to Dover, and uh, just love the sport of racing and NASCAR in particular. It's been, yeah, wow, what a busy summer for you guys. I, I guess we'll get right into it because I know I have some questions. I'm sure a lot of the fans watching at home have questions about uh, ABB and NASCAR's recent partnership, specifically, of course, the EV prototype that many may have seen on the streets of Chicago. Uh, it was first introduced a year ago. It's made a few appearances since. Uh, my first question for you, Chris, I guess, is what has been ABB's specific role in helping develop these prototype race cars? Sure. Well, I, the, the car itself was developed by NASCAR R&D Center in collaboration with Ford, Chevrolet and Toyota. So they all gathered together and they said, hey, let's let's look at this technology, see what we can do with it. And uh, and partnered with Goodyear that has special R&D in those Goodyear Eagle tires. And uh, ABB is a sponsor. We are an electrification automation company around the world. And so wherever there's electricity, ABB is somewhere there. So together as a partner, just exploring, what would it look like? What would electric racing look like? What's the infrastructure you would need? And then some energy education about, hey, let's have a better conversation about energy in the United States, because these decisions are important. Absolutely. Well, as I understand it, these prototype cars that we've seen on the racetrack now are built on modified next gen car chassis. I yeah. don't know how much you can get into the details or the, the, the specifics, but when we when we say modified, how modified are we talking here? <laughs> While I'm not a NASCAR engineer, I've learned so much about this car. <laughs> so the they wanted to use the chassis of the next gen car and then but change the propulsion system to to electric. So when you look at the car, the first thing you'll notice as you peek inside is the battery actually sits in the passenger seat, right? Oh, it's not a skateboard battery that lies underneath the car. So, so it sits in the passenger seat next to the driver, and uh, that, that causes some unique engineering uh, because you want it's heavy, so you want to counterbalance that weight. Open up the hood, the first thing you notice is there's no engine. There, there are three electric motors, one on the front, two on the rear, all-wheel drive which is different than a cup series car and um look evs are famous for their acceleration so there, there's 1360 horsepower in this vehicle so it, it's an impressive machine yeah and we had a uh, david reagan as you know is the test driver for this vehicle he that former nascar driver now uh ford test driver and uh you know we had to level him up to get used to the power, right? You start them off in a parking lot, 500 um, horsepower, and then bump it up to 800, bump it up to 1,000, and uh, uh, to really get used to the speed that's available to the driver. Yeah, I, I remember seeing this uh, at Daytona in person in February. Yeah. Uh, they was doing donuts out in the, the midway. And that's right. You could like you could physically like see the, the the acceleration the torque i guess in the car um so at chicago i know you showcased all three toyota ford and chevrolet all had their own ev prototype uh, on display uh, like i said it was at daytona it's made other appearances i'm sure over the course of the last year in general what has been the fan I I response i guess or reaction to these cars Sure. So as you mentioned, we launched in Chicago and then we had this incredible milestone with three prototypes on the track one year later. Um, the, we've taken this car to 14 states over the past wow. year to have better conversations about energy, not only to NASCAR racetracks, right? We've taken it other places. We've taken it to our factories, to our customers. We've taken it to trade shows. Get this, Eric. We took it to New York City Climate Week in downtown Manhattan 
place wow. NASCAR's never been before. We took it to an energy policy event in Washington, D.C. We took it to the Cotton Bowl in Texas to let fans see it and ask questions about it. So uh, certainly energy education is a core component of the campaign. And, and it's certainly, as you can expect, has created a lot of conversation. Um, hey, the fans, we get, when we talk to fans in person at the track, we get lots of great questions. There's a curiosity there. There is a, hey, how fast does it go? What's the zero to 60? What does a pit stop look like? What's regenerative braking? And we start talking about these things. And that's what we mean by having a better conversation about energy. The NASCAR fan base is great. Like, you know, it's a family. You, go, you can walk around the campground and just realize that it's a family. And sure, not everybody loves EVs. We get that. But, uh, but it's that curiosity, that ability to ask questions. And I think it starts, Eric, with respect. You know, when, when, when we talk to fans and we respect uh, how they feel or, or their, their, what they believe about EVs versus a combustion engine. And, we, it, it, you know, from our perspective, it, it's, it's, it's a bad discussion to talk about either or. It's a bad discussion to say this or that when, when a better discussion is an and. And I think when you look for the consumer of what's in the marketplace now, you have more choice than pro ever in history of what you want to purchase, right? Yeah. You want a V8 truck, Eric? There's a V8 truck for you. You want a electric uh, supercar? There's one of those too, right? Like, so I, I think it's a win for consumers. And I think in the tradition of NASCAR, just looking at them running stock cars and, 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 and running what, you know, fans are buying on Monday is uh, kind of goes deep to the roots and history of NASCAR. Yeah, I, I agree with you there for sure. And you mentioned a, a general curiosity that fans have. Um, I kind of want to get into a few of those, let's call them sample questions, because some, sure. some may call them concerns even. Uh, I know whenever fans see these prototype EV cars showcase, they'll talk about how they prefer the traditional sound, the roar of V8 engines. They'll say, yeah. you know, we don't want to see the Cup Series go electric anytime soon. What do you say to fans who, who say something like that? Well, first of all, the Cup Series isn't going electric. Actually, none of NASCAR series are going electric, right? The, I, I love them all. You know, the Cup Series, the, the, the Truck Series, the Xfinity Series. Um, th that that's not what this prototype is about. Um, we get a lot of fan reaction that says, hey, don't touch my my racing, but more is good, mm -hmm. right? So I, we get a lot of that. And we also get a lot about the sound, right? Fans love the roar of the V8 engine. And, and here I'm gonna say something that's gonna surprise you, Eric. Okay. I love it too. It's awesome. I, I go to almost every race. I, I, I love the one lap to go before the green flag as they roar by, right? It's mm -hmm. cool. Um, the EVs are also cool, okay? And, and, and it's different. It, it sounds a little bit like a jet going by. We, we, we also sponsor ABB Formula E. That's the electric mm -hmm. open wheel racing that races around the world. Um, this prototype is a, makes a little more noise. It's a little heavier, uh, and and then you get three of them on the track, and and it sounds, you know, it's in the eye of the beholder. But to me, it sounds really cool. It's different. It's not the same as the Cup Series. Uh, I, you know, sometimes it doesn't. Electric racing doesn't have to be that. You know, you don't have to make a monkey be a fish. Uh, but um, but I think it makes a cool sound in and of itself. Plus, you know, you can talk, you, you don't need hearing protection. So there, there's pros and cons to both propulsion systems, but uh, no one's taking away your, your, your favorite racing series. And uh, but we are striving to look at, hey, what can technology do? What can innovation do? And, and NASCAR certainly doesn't want to be caught flat footed looking in the rear view mirror saying, why didn't we even explore this? There are a lot of folks out there that might be uh, somewhat skeptical just of EVs in general, mm -hmm. um, not just in racing. So I want to get your take on um, 
the electric vehicle market broadly speaking today, yeah. especially in America? Sure, sure. So look, the, the there is certainly automakers are looking at where the market's going and they have to make decisions based on that. And sometimes these decisions are long-term decisions. You know, if you're gonna build a factory, you're, you're gauging out into a market that's five years, 10 years in, in advance. Uh, so automakers are gonna look at that and make decisions for their customers. What we see is the electric vehicle market is growing. It's not growing at the rate we predicted or a lot of people predicted, right? It's, it's, it's a slower rate of growth than expected. Uh, but last year, a record number of EVs were sold in the US. This year will be comparable to that. So when you look worldwide, then we still see extraordinarily rates of growth. Uh, you know, as we look at being competitive globally, you know, the automakers look at nations like China and say, hey, China's all in on EV and they're all in on the infrastructure it takes to build that out. So how can the United States stay competitive with that? Uh, these, I am sure the automakers are gonna make the right decisions for their consumers. I, I think from my standpoint as, as a longtime EV driver, I've, I've been fully EV for almost 10 years. Um, Eric, they're, they're just fun to drive. I, I, I would say this, Look, if you're not sold on the EV thing, that's okay. You, there's lots of combustion cars, great combustion cars out there. You, you might, I would just say, take it, take one for a spin so you can make that decision for yourself. Hey, this is for me, this isn't for me. Because uh, it'd be a shame if you made decisions without even, you know, experiencing what an EV is like to drive. You mentioned David Reagan earlier. I know Raja Cruz, Brent Cruz also got to drive these. What do the drivers think of the, the prototype? So I got lots of great reactions, uh, whether it's from the, the only very few drivers have driven this car. Um, so, you know, obviously David Reagan, uh, you mentioned the drift track. We had Ryan Turek, who's a drift right. champion in the car from Toyota. Um, it, just in Chicago, we had Raja Carruth and Brent Cruz. Mm -hmm. So somebody said, oh, wait, Brent Cruz, Raja Carruth and David Reagan, you have past, present, future. And it's like, yeah, I guess, I guess. <laughs> that do, wasn't yeah. our intention, but I guess that worked out that way. But uh, also, you know, um, uh, Justin Allgaier uh, test drove the, the Chevrolet uh, Blazer EVR. And, uh, you know, the one thing I noticed is when people like David Reagan and Justin Allgaier, they're great human beings. If you've been around them in the oh, yeah. garage at all, you're like, oh my gosh, you, you, you know, really great people. Team guys, absolutely, 100%. Yeah, and, and, but the reaction they get, I mean, I, I was there when Justin tested the Chevy for the first time and, and he got out and started talking to David. Two, two guys that, you know, very limited number of people have driven this thing and they were, you know, all excited talking to each other about it. And I, I wish I had that on camera, that, that it was gold um, because, you know, they were talking about, the acceleration they're talking about what it's like to to not have the engine noise so you can hear the suspension in the corners you mm. hear the tire grip as it goes around the track and and it's just a new experience for them what it feels like to set the regenerative braking going into the corner the driver has a lot of freedom to set how much regenerative braking they want how much power they want there's a push to pass option oh, in the ooh. car Right, like, um, so that's technology. Like, how would a NASCAR driver do that? I have some NASCAR drivers who are like, I, I would just like to feel what it's like with all wheel drive mm -hmm. on, the, on the course, right? And, uh, and, and to get that experience. Um, and it's been great talking to, to Cup Series drivers who drive an EV uh, for their daily driver. You know, David Reagan, he, he's a traditional guy, learned to drive the NASCAR, and uh, of the EV prototype. Now he drives a Ford Mustang Mach-E as his daily driver. Talk to Ross Chastain. He's got a Chevy Silverado EV. Uh, so, and you know, lots of NASCAR drivers just, they, they like to drive. Focusing on the NASCAR bit, I think it's great that 
NASCAR and its current automakers have been willing to embrace this project because like you said earlier, you know, when you talk about a five, 10 year plan, there are a lot of different directions. The, the car industry, the marketplace could go. And so mm -hmm. having this research, having these prototypes built, established, having that baseline, it could be extremely beneficial in the near or in the distant future. This, this was really interesting. Some of my big takeaways from this, Chris, were no worries, Cup Series is not going electric, <laughs> at least not anytime remotely no soon. Um, but also I, I love, again, I love the sort of um, collaborative language you're using, uh, working with Goodyear, working with NASCAR, working with Ford, Chevy, Toyota, and beyond. And, uh, and I also love that you don't seem stuck on just one idea. Like it is still a very open-ended hypothesis, try different things, experiment and see where this goes. Uh, it's been cool to see this car in person. It, it catches your attention and may not be for everyone, but I, like you said earlier, I'm always up for more stock car racing, especially if it looks and sounds and feels a little bit different. I love variety. Um, Chris, I really appreciate your time today. Thank you so much for joining us and, and hope to see you at a racetrack sometime soon. Sounds like you travel more than I do. So I, I, I'm sure our paths will cross at sometime soon. You'll see me. All right. Thanks, Eric. I enjoy your show.